Yeah, look at that badge. Look at that badge. Premium badge. Purple. Royalty. Hey, Dave. Good to see you, brother. How are you? Thanks, guys. What's up, Aiden? Yeah, you're the guy. Yeah, that's the that's the king right there. Hey, how are you? Thank you. 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 I got the 65 and it's in the rut, it's a 68. Come on, if we take a photo of it just to look at, oh, you can. Look at it later while I'm dreaming? <laughs> it's pretty much, pretty much work free. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I would never crack it up to get it to be hold it for Yeah, that's what you're telling me, yeah. Toners for life here, man, it's great. You can show this one the bottom. Oh, okay. It's probably the main one I'd be interested in, but I don't know how much you might need for what, it. What, the 93S? Yeah. I wouldn't take less than, I was thinking 74. It's a lot. But, you know, like I said, you're not going to find a lot of it in that kind of condition. Yeah. It's a 25 cac, right? No, it's a 20. 20? Okay. Yeah, I think it looks like a 25. Uh, it looks XF40 in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I can't see a reason to sell it for less than 74. Where did you come across for that? Just, uh... I've had it for years. Yeah, it's a good point. I can't, I can't, I can't. I don't know, probably since 2015 or something. What made you want to sell it? Uh, I have a couple. Just a couple, uh, you yeah, know. I'm an old man. Casual day of just having a few out, you know? When you start getting old, you start selling stuff. Uh, yeah. I don't mean to bother you. But uh, do you know what you need on that? We have a subscriber over here. I'm not too sure on this one. Probably like $100. Hey guys, I wanted to show you what is going to be our next giveaway. It's going to be two proof silver Ikes. If you're interested in entering, just leave a comment so we can pick the next winner. If you enjoy the video, if you guys want to stay up to date on the coin content that we're going to be putting out in the future, the collections we're going to be buying, and the different cool stuff that we do along the road, like and subscribe so you can stay in the loop. We appreciate you. We look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hey, Mike. Sorry, one second, Russ. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys put on a good show. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Yeah. I was glad to see you guys on it, you know, when I saw you mentioned it on the TV, too. So I said, yeah, I'm definitely going to run it to you guys. You know, you could sell it for eight grand, I think. Yeah, I think CPG's at like 77 or 76. 78. 78, yeah. You're right. Yeah, the only uh, the only issue I have is this one's basically it's the same coin, but they're asking seventy eight fifty. By the time they ship it and everything, it's going to be around seven grand of what they're probably going to get. I, so. I saw that one. Already. That's a good coin, though. Yeah, well, wish I could do better for you, but it's it's priced right. It's just not yeah. much margin for me unless I had a direct customer. Yeah. No controllers really good. My my market's kind of dried up on those, yeah. But you do you do buy key dates too, so that's why I want to build. This I, was an Andy Kimmel. I'm going to go over to Northern Nevada. Yeah, Northern Nevada. I think they're right in the yeah, front yeah. over here, I believe. Yep. Is that for you guys? Yeah. Thank you so much for showing me though, Russ. Uh, my pleasure. I have a cheaper one if you want to see some. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. I don't know what, I don't know, you know, what you can do on them. I don't have any prices on these, really. Okay. Yeah, because I took pictures, so I want to have those too. I was just looking at how that's, gorgeous. Yeah, that's a good one. I had to show this been sitting in the roll. Yeah. But it's still very pretty. And you don't get that kind of color on paper rolls. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah. Yeah, I just threw some stuff in there that I know you can probably sell. Okay, here's the first one for you. That one, uh, it's 250 I offered 290 One just sold for 330 so. Okay. I don't know what you can do with Franklin's, but this is a pretty nice Franklin. I'm selling that pretty cheap. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I saw NGC sold for 180, so I would offer 165 on that. And this one's about the same, about 170s, what that one sells for, and I'd, I'd offer that much. Like I said, I just bought it for sale. Yeah. You're hunting the, you're hunting the big fish, so that's, sometimes that's, that's a good, you know. So honestly, if you don't sell the cheaper stuff, you're never going to have a good business. you got to sell cheap stuff and good stuff. Yeah, you got to be able to turn them, but just at different tables. Not everybody can afford the high-end stuff. Yeah. you got to have stuff available for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Most of this for me is, yeah, just pretty much melt. Or if there's any toning, it's some, most of these guys are paying back a melt, but... I probably would just check around first and see. Okay. Is that, you know, you probably can get a dollar or two over for somebody that's more passionate about them than me. So, okay. Does that work for you, Russ, on these? Yes. Let me just check one last time here. Yeah, the prices are there. This is like eBay prices or what I was trying to sell. Okay. Just sold one non OGH for 600 and bids 540. I was thinking 650. Yes. What's his name? He's worth what the cash value is. He's older than that? No. I think I paid uh, 650 for that. That's why I'm. Yeah, that makes sense. It, yeah, it's exactly where I would I would put it. It's just not enough space sometimes. Yeah. sense on this one, Russ. I'm trying to find even where a sale might be for that. I'd go seven on it. Okay. I think they just sold one for seven seventy five. I just found this one. Yeah, I'm kind of yeah. That doesn't even look clean to me. Yeah, it just was kind of someone brushed it hard on the face just to get something off, but other than that it's not a big this yeah. is about the same look as that one. I know that to me that's a good point for an album. Album point. Somebody crack it out and put it in an album. Yeah. yeah, and this coin I'm like in six, so probably doesn't make any sense to you yeah. that. I'll tell you, I go six fifty. Yeah. You can still make a little money on it. Yeah, I'll stretch and make it happen for you. Yeah. 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 And it's got that look yeah. like you said. Oh. Alright boys. Uh, How would you like to get paid to do it? Yeah. Yeah. The check's fine, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to get a few milk things in the yeah, stock. I so. yeah. You want to double check everything looks right? Uh, you look good, Casey. Okay. All righty, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right, so basically our first purchases of the show. Just a few better date Morgan dollars that are low grade, affordable. It's kind of what we pay for things. Most of them sell 10% more, maybe a little bit more than that on eBay, but Russ stopped by and wanted to sell us these. All right guys, so another person came by the table and they wanted to sell us some stuff. His name's Joey. And he brought us an 1854 $5 gold piece in OGH. And it was gold stickered. So I think it was like 850 on this with the green sticker and we paid like 1100. I think that's pretty fair for the date and where the market is on these. 
And then he also brought an 1857 seated quarter. Very tough to get stickers on type coins from this era. And it came from a pedigree and just needs to be buffed. So, neat coins. Okay, so we have more coins that came to the table. I have an 1898S $20 gold piece and 63 CAC. Gold libs are tougher with stickers than most people think, so. And then I have a 1900 $20 gold piece and 64 CAC grading. Then an 1837 $2.5 gold piece and VF30 CAC. And an 1861-0 shipwreck. The shipwreck effect. Most of the time with shipwrecks, you can kind of look and see what they sell for maybe on eBay. Um, with the other CAC stuff, it's mainly used gray sheet app and it works out that way too. So I'm gonna look at and see what some of this stuff goes for. Because basically what happens at the table is people come up to you and they want you to price things and you have to have some semblance of what things have sold for and then offer that accordingly to them so like when you're going to a deal you have to say they sell for this much i'd offer this much if it's slower for you to move you have to back off the number maybe from 10 percent to 20 percent because some stuff sits for six months to a year minimum this stuff if it's cacked it moves a lot faster so you have to pay stronger so it just depends if someone brings cheaper coins clean coins that stuff you have to offer back significantly most times unless it's a really nice date like the 89 cc you guys saw so. so i'm looking at three comps one for 530 one for 363 and one for 495 this one's a slower mover for us so for me i mean i probably at least have to be at, at a minimum of 300 um, if i wanted to price it higher then I would have to have to sit on it longer and price it higher on my end. So I'll give that a shot. And if he needs a little bit more, then I can work into it as well. So 1837, two and a half. Most of these just never sticker. And it's pretty rare to get one with a sticker. And you have to pay a lot for a sticker. So a lot of the coins that come up to our table are collector coins. So sometimes bid it is pretty irrelevant. One that sold for 1080 in 2022. So there's none actually listed on eBay. And the one that he purchased was for 1097. So you can actually see where he bought it. And if if someone's sending a coin to auction, that's kind of where the market is, unless someone missed out on it, but that's kind of where for me where the market is my, myself. I mean if I bought this coin for myself, I'd probably want to offer him what he bought it for. But I mean he paid eleven dollars over bid. I probably could just pay bid, which is 1080, and if I find a collector for it, then I can make 50 bucks, but sometimes it's about the relationship. There's two other coins that we purchased, the ones that we just showed you, the gold cack, the other one. I wouldn't have paid that much most times, but it's just about a relationship at the end of the day, and that's what works for you in your favor. So it's not necessarily what somebody sells you it's about what somebody uh, would like to possibly sell you one day if you're a strong enough buyer for it and uh, you just got to be as fair as you can so the 98s and 63 pack it is 3102 the comps are are 2022 so they don't sticker too often 2760 is what they sold for in 2022 so I'm probably going to be underbid on this coin. I know that every other dealer would be underbid on this coin. 3102. I mean, pr price guide itself is 3150. And most of the other examples, I mean, one just sold on eBay without the sticker for 2600. And for me, that just I don't know if it makes any sense to buy it more than I don't know. Sometimes what you can do is check the grade higher in 64, so 64 CAC, which is 3,300. So there's no spread from 63 to 64. Um, now this one does paint a different picture. So the PCGS one in 64 sold for 3,960. And Gracie values 3,300. 
I don't know, I'm just... Some of this stuff will be just harder to move. So without stickers, I see one sold for 3000 2890 $2840. Uh, I'm probably gonna try to be like 29 or 2850 And if I can sell it for bid or above bid, then I'll try, but that's basically all I would do on that coin. We have the $1,920 gold piece in 64 cacked rated. So I see some that have cacked with a sticker for $3,240, $3,360. Based on the coin, CAC grading is not as strong as CAC stickering. So a PCGS NGC coin with the sticker is a lot higher than a CAC grading coin most times. Gracie bid on, on the 1900s, 2800 and the stickers, one just sold for $3,240. But it was from the Fairmont collection. And it is sticker PCGS CAC, which is the strongest. So if I can be a bid or a little bit back a bit, then I'm gonna give it a shot. So I'm putting 2650 on it, and we'll see what happens. So some stuff, if you're not in love with it, price it for you're not in love with it. And if there are other stuff that you can use that you're really passionate about, you can pay it for because you know you have customers for it. If you don't know and you don't have customers for it, then you can't pay it strong. So and it's sold for 360. So. I'm a, if I list it for 360, I'll sell it for 330. This one is, I think, the same coin that I saw recently sell. I couldn't find any other comps other than the right. one on eBay. Right, right, but not yeah. recent. It has, wasn't yeah, a recent sale, right? Yeah, that, this one, it's the same certain number, but it was a, I'm pretty sure it was recent. Yeah. Um, okay. So I probably would be about 1080 on that one. All right. This one, I think, I don't know what this bid is, is 28 uh, on this coin, and I'm at. I think I'd probably be back at that okay. right now. On most gold, I am. So. Understood. Uh, no, I know. I do spoke. And this one, I think bid is like 30, 50, and I think pr full price guy's 31, 50. But it's just so tough with a sticker. But I don't necessarily have the customer. Most right. of the time, that's dealer to dealer business. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what you got? Uh, I actually have running it. Oh. Go ahead. I'm pretty sure I have all the cash you need. Yes. Yeah, did you get this number? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's right. Something like that. Maybe. You got. You got. So as you guys can see, uh, we just made an agreement with them. And we just kind of gave them what we would sell things for. So some stuff is retail. Some stuff most likely will be sold to wholesale. So you can list all four of these coins. But at the end of the day, there's some stuff you would just take to a show, make $100 on, and move on from it. Because you might not have a retail customer for that coin. Or if you want to sit on it for a while, have a retail customer. There's other stuff, like this 1837 2.5 that our customers would love and we just matched the last sale of it. So that's why we paid a little bit more. But it's kind of all depending on where your overhead is and what your dealer to dealer and then your customer sales are as well. So there's great stuff for the website that would sell instantly and there's some stuff that would never sell on the website that we would still post. So you just gotta have to balance that, shoot from the hip and then move on from there. So we had a customer come to the table and they wanted us to buy coins back from them and so what I get to do now is basically when someone returns a coin to me that I really like like this $10 Indian here and 64 NGC CAC he said I just take 10% less than what I bought it at so he bought this 1926 for 2050 and I can give him 1845 for it which is 10%, but it's a cacked Indian, it's a it's an old thick holder NGC, and that's fine. The walkers right now, like the common walkers, this is a 43 and 66. It's a white coin, but it's just so hard for me to, to sell. I think I have 20 or 30 of these 66 walkers just hanging out. The 1826 and XF45 has been cleaned. Most cap bus taps have been cleaned. 
but this one, yeah, you can always put a price on anything, but it's not not something I'm in love with. If it was original, it'd be in a different ballpark. So I'm just gonna look at the that gray sheet on this 43. And this stuff, like I said, takes a little longer if you have more in stock. So 66 bit is now 110. So these are really falling down. The last few that have sold have been for 120, 114, 119. So I'd have to be like 100. I probably could say gray sheet bid or more than that. Probably sell for 120. So I'm only making 20 bucks on that coin. But if someone's not passionate about it, I can do that. And this one in 45 is 190. Yeah. And the last few that I've seen have sold have been for 192, 192, 210. So I'm at like, I don't, I don't like the coin either. So I'm at like maybe 160. I just don't like it. So I'll do 165. So. Ah, that is good. So you've got a camera here to like record your interactions with people. Yeah, I mean, you can either record interactions, but you could also, so you're buying a coin. Yeah. You're telling them what you're paying, yeah. and you're breaking it down. Yeah. So stuff that's easier for you to sell, or has more of a premium, yeah. you could just turn on the camera at your back table, hey guys, this is the three coins I was offered. Right, here's what I'm doing. Good, I'm good doing. customer, some stuff I can't move. This coin, I can't move. Right. This coin, pick holder, whatever. Great. So you bring a tripod, the camera with your mic on it, so then you can just have that whole thing happen. Yeah, so there's this cool. guy, he sent me this this uh, Amazon list. His name's Noah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so this, this thing oh, is this from is that. Oh, this is where you got that. Yeah, just this tripod. What, what camera are you using, by Sony the way? Sony A7 So we just got wrapped up with the collector. He took our offer instantly on the 26th, because it's just 10% back, and he agreed to that. And he took our number on uh, the walker. And the 1826 Capos Taff he passed on. Uh, you know, sometimes you gotta pay a lot of money for those, and the market's kind of weird. So he probably could sell it to another cut, uh, another dealer or customer for twenty five, thirty dollars more, and that makes sense. So, and we gave him some money to walk the show. So, two good coins, and uh, glad we can buy them and and see a customer that we see on our website a lot. So you've been buying stuff locally as of late, kind of thing. Um, I buy as it comes. Um, before I left, I lived south of Miami. Right. Before I left, somebody offered me three gold points, so I, I just never know what's coming. Right. So it's kind of a. I like it that way. Yeah. So I guess they saw. I guess eBay saw one recently for six sixty. I don't know. I guess what, what. I guess that's kind of where you need to be. I don't know if I have any room with that, unfortunately. I guess this is my only hang up on this one, Brian, which it might not work for you, I guess. That's the that's the tough part, but we just sold one in 62 CAC, I think last month, for 40 80. So that's yeah, I understand there's yeah. a lot of variability uh, the higher the price the coin goes. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm that's why it didn't make probably any sense for you I mean, and for us. Yeah. Gray sheets I think at 41 20 uh, but of course, the city, you know, it goes up above Gray Sheet, so, you know, I mean, that's... Yeah, I think there was two that Heritage sold on August 16th in 62 CAC. Yeah, I think Heritage, I don't know what your opinion is, I think it does kind of a disservice when, um... Because they'll bundle any particular date uh, in mid -mark. So right. in a particular Heritage auction, there can be three of them at that point. Exactly. And yeah. then what happens is it is a dip in the market. And I, if I was a... I don't know if I was if I had my collection on Heritage, I would I wouldn't want one every three months maybe yeah uh, of a certain like right. date mid mark. So I think that's a negative. That's a negative Heritage. for them and and someone that pulls it up on me too. That's the only issue I yeah. have. Yeah. So. Where if there was only yeah, it, it's I don't know. It's my opinion of Heritage what it does for us. Yeah, I think when they uploaded two, they probably knocked off ten percent off of what it might have brought. So I see like. It's 4,862 CAC, and they both sold for 4,080. But I think that just having two there knocked off 20% off each coin. Just yeah, that's my issue with Heritage. Yeah, which kind of hurts 
all the coins I have in my case, so as well. Yeah, it affects everybody. Yeah, exactly. Nothing else jumping out of you here, unfortunately, yeah, Brian. That's, that's all good. I just uh, figured I'd start with you, but oh, we'll walk the ground. Yeah, it's good to check. Because people, uh, you know, if there's not a lot of people that come to the show, they kind of say, now I need to buy my way out of the show. So if they see a really nice Carson City Gold piece come up to the table, they might want to buy it. Yeah. Because they have a customer for it. I just don't have a, a customer for that one, probably. Yeah, right recommendation for somebody that might be interested in I would just check with as many people as possible and keep your net price where your net price needs to be, you know? Because I, I don't think it's uh, easily replaceable in that, in that sense. So, I appreciate it. thanks, guys. Nice to see you. Thank you so much. Thank Good to see you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, we did end up buying one coin from a dealer. It's a 1913D Barber Half and 63 plus CAC. So, most of the time with barbers that are halves, that are mint state, most of them are dark and not attractive. And this one is white. It's a plus, it's a CAC. It's the eye appeal that most barber half collectors in Mid-State want. And we paid $11.75 for it, as you can see on the sticker, but I feel like that is fair. You know, you probably can make $75, $100 on it, but in this market, you want to pick choice coins that your customers would love, and sometimes they'll love the coin, sometimes more than the price, if the price is a little bit stronger. But it takes a lot of time to find barbers this nice with this great of eye appeal. So. Beautiful coin. You just saw us talk to uh, Brian, and a lot of the coins he had were great. It's just that there was no margin for us. Heritage has been pumping out a bunch of coins, selling them, but selling them under market, just because there may not be demand or there's a lot coming out. So I've had to turn away a lot of coins to show with Casey. So, so I want to talk about a few coins that came up to the table and our rationale and why we bought them. So the first coin is this 1921 Standing Liberty Quarter. So most 1921 Standing Liberty Quarters, the date's pretty much worn off, and you can't really see it fully. So this one, an AU55 CAC, really caught my eye. We had to pay overbid for it, but I felt like it was a fair coin to buy and to offer. And you know, someone wanting to buy T-date Standing Liberty Quarters with originality to it, great luster to it, um, what an AU should truly look like, that's the coin. Uh, the next coin I want to talk to you about, which is a guy also brought this coin, which is this 1928 P-Stellar in XF40. So it's got a nice original crusty look to it. It's a mid-grade. Most of the time you're paying about double for Mint State 61s, uh, probably even more for Mint State 61s. And so I just thought the coin looked nice, and it's hard to find Cirque 28s in PCGS holders, so that's cool. I also bought this 1811. Capo Staff and XF40. It's a small eight, and a gray sheet bid is 450 on this coin. We paid 500 for it, but just the originality, it being stickered. This is how Capo should look, especially if you're adding it to a circulated set like most serious collectors do. We have an 1831 Capo Staff in Mint State 63. Phenomenal luster has some reddish, orangish toning to the reverse, but. A decent coin. We did have to pay over sheet for that, but that's kind of where those are right now. And then we have this 1922 Grant. Um, it is the star, so that's where you pay a lot more money for it. Uh, we ended up paying gray sheet bid on this one, but it's a white coin. We sold one yesterday for $165 over gray sheet bid. And so, you know, you could sell this to a dealer and make 100 bucks, or sell it to a customer and make a few hundred bucks, which is great. And the last one is this 14D and Mint State 64 brown CAC. The toning's phenomenal on it. It's got one carbon spot on the reverse, but the true views are great. Exceptionally hard to run into, and uh, I felt like we paid fair for what it's worth, and we hope you guys enjoy it if you want to take a look on AcousticCollectibles.com. You can take them out, and they're, they're yours. Take out what you want, and this isn't going to be a problem. I'll, I've got enough to fill many albums of these. I did give you a couple of silver dollars in there that are uncirculated. Oh, okay. I gave you one. You got a 72D in there. You should hit a 67. Do you want a water, Marty? Oh, hey, I, we haven't got nothing to drink. 
We stopped at Wendy's on the way up oh, here. Thank you. Uh, yeah, this is a lifelong friend, Richard. Like I said, he grew up at the Mint. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I'm the coin collector, and I grew up in Detroit. I don't love <laughs> but my relatives... Collect a fun time once in a while, right? Wow, great. There we go, Ricky. Yeah. Got two cards. Boom. That, that uh, You'll get one of them when I get back. Yeah, I, I needed them. You know, look at yeah. that. So you guys drove three hours each way to see us, huh? Three hours. It's a six-hour round trip. Oh, wow. So you can, you can think about it. You guys need to eat something good then on the way back or well, something. I, hey, my whole idea was to take you guys out to dinner, but you wouldn't believe what we went through to get in here. This, he's pushing me all around. We had to find an elevator and everything. But This place is not handicapped. Yeah, it's, it's tough to find nowhere to go. Yeah. Marty, did you have anything to say to the people uh, that watch our YouTube video? Um, just keep up the collecting, and um, I didn't know you were going to post this, but um, it's a lot of fun to, to get out and, and meet people and do things, and, and that's, you know, although I'm retired and a lot of people are working, I can understand having a hard time to uh, get out and intermingle with people, but, um, you know, you've, you've got to get out and do things for yourself. You go out to eat, you go to movie theaters, you know, go to the coin show, where it, it's about education and preservation, and that's what I'm trying to do here is, you know, educate people with it's a, it's a fun hobby to get into. It, it can have a little money, but, you know, this is the way it goes. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. All right, guys. So we just wanted to thank you for the support on the last video. We got a bunch of comments, people that enjoyed it and liked the video. We got people that subscribed because they enjoyed our content. If you guys want to be entered into the next giveaway, which we talked about earlier in this video, just comment your thoughts about the video. If you guys do enjoy our videos, make sure to leave a like and comment. And uh, let's get to the giveaway. We're going to show you guys who we picked. We actually use a random generator so that you guys know that it's fair for everybody. And so let's show you guys who won. All right, guys. So we have the YouTube link from last video. Have everything filtered. And we have 256 unique comments. We're going to go down and pick somebody here. All right, Lewis. All right, guys, so you just saw Lewis won. Lewis, you wanna reach out to me, you can text me, you can email us. You also can uh, reach out to me on Instagram. Just a proof of your comment is all we need, so make sure to send a screenshot to us. I'll leave the, all the information that you might need right here. But thanks again, Lewis, and everybody that supported us and left a cool comment from the last video.